Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Tonight I will be teaching on the necessity of wisdom. The necessity of wisdom. Let's quickly pray. Holy Spirit, illumination is received as you speak this word to our heart in the name of Jesus. And we have understanding and insight into your gracious words. We will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The necessity of wisdom. I want to start in a way that everybody will feel that this message is useful to them. I believe that this message is actually useful to everyone. But let me start by saying that there is no much of a problem. It's not a big problem. It's not a massive problem. If there is a measure of foolishness in the life of someone, if somebody has a measure of foolishness, the person is not alone. Many people, if not everyone, has an element, no matter how small, a measure of this thing called foolishness, or as the King James would put it, simplicity. In Luke chapter 24, verse 25, Jesus had risen from the dead and he was scolding some of his disciples who had been teaching about his death, burial, and resurrection. And he called them fools. He said they were slow in heart to believe. Oh, fools and slow in heart to believe. All of these things that have happened, I've been trying to explain to you. The prophet mentioned it. I taught you. So their slowness to believe made that tag fool to be a justified tag. <laughs> what I'm saying here is that many of us have been guilty of the same thing. We have been slow to believe. We have been taught several things again and again and again. And then, if Jesus is to say something, you will say, Oh, foolish. What? Why are you slow to believe? Don't be angry. It's not an insult. It's just a description of the state of your heart. Are you listening to me? That does not mean that you should go around and be calling people fools. I'm saying, Oh, foolish. Oh, foolish. Oh, foolish. I'm only trying to say here that if you study scriptures, one of the things you notice is that there are certain descriptions of hearts like the one we read here, that affirms the presence of foolishness in the mind of even good people. These were disciples of Jesus. They were not Pharisees. They were not wicked men. They were not publicans. They were disciples of Jesus. But he called them foolish ones. So it's not a big problem that somebody has an element of foolishness. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 2. Or the entire first 15 verses perhaps talks about the parable of the virgins 10 of them 5 were wise and 5 were foolish is that not so foolish virgins they were virgins but they were foolish somebody can be a pastor and is foolish are you listening to me somebody can be a righteous man but he's foolish somebody can be a fine girl but she's foolish are you getting it? <laughs> so no, it's not it, it's not a big problem like that. So, the Bible says they were virgins, but they were foolish virgins. <laughs> so don't overrate yourself and say, no, there is no trace of riches in my heart. <laughs> One of the things that the word of God does is to bring conviction and expose the foolishness in your soul. Every time you hear God's word, foolishness is supposed to be exposed so that when it's exposed, you can deal with it. Are you listening to me? That's why one of the ways that foolishness is perfected is when it combines with pride. Oh, there is nothing as catastrophic as a foolish, proud person. It's something that cannot be recovered from. Foolishness and pride is a bad combo. <laughs> and one of the ways, of course, you see somebody who is wise is that he's open to learning. He does not admit he knows it all. He's learning. The moment you stop learning because you feel that you know enough, what you have done is to successfully install a great measure of foolishness and simplicity. I think that in this teaching series, I will not be using foolishness that much. I will just be using simplicity. Like that one is a soft, it's a soft koboko. Say, don't be simple, don't be simple. It just means don't be foolish or don't be stupid. Don't, so when you tell your neighbor, don't be simple. Don't worry, it's the Bible, it's the Bible. Don't. Say it loud, don't be simple. We have to get used to biblical conversations like this <laughs> with a coded touch. So, foolish virgins, foolish father, foolish daddy, foolish geo, foolishness can enter anybody's heart. Irrespective of your post, your position, your title, your chairman status. 
foolish governor, foolish senator, foolish president. It's possible, oh, possible. Foolish king, foolish queen. But it's not so much of a big deal. I want to mention four ways in which the Bible uses the phrase fools or foolishness or simplicity. And you see that, okay, it's not really a death sentence as it were. And I will show you biblical verses to portray this point. The first thing I want to say is that the Bible used the phrase fools to describe actions of sinfulness. The Bible used the term foolishness rather to describe actions of sin. For instance, in Numbers chapter 12 and verse 11, this was when Miriam and Aaron challenged Moses. What Aaron said about himself is, Oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. So Aaron recognized that his act of sin was an expression of foolishness. Every sin is foolish. I mean, how can God tell Adam, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. And there were many trees, yet that was the same tree you now went to eat. That is foolishness. There's no other way to describe it. The tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but it brought folly. His attempt to eat the tree was foolishness. After I ate the tree, the result was foolishness. Every act of sin, every thought of sin, every expression of sin is an act of foolishness. Psalm 69, verse 5. Look at the way the psalmist describes it here. Psalm 69, verse 5. Oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. So he's saying the same thing. Foolishness, you know it. My sins, you also know it. It's not hidden from you. Every expression or act of sin, the Bible calls it foolishness. The second way you see that phrase foolishness used is with respect to act of immaturity and inexperience. Immaturity and inexperience. Proverbs 22 verse 15. Proverbs 22 verse 15. Foolishness abounds in the heart of every child. But the rod of correction will drive it out. As long as someone is a child, someone is still growing, someone is not yet fully mature, there will be inevitable expressions of foolishness. If somebody is an immature Christian, occasionally it will manifest some measures of foolishness. Like I said, it's not a death sentence. It is just what it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. But now that I'm a grown man, I've put away childish things. Why did he put away childish things? Because it was foolishness. Perez does some foolish things. Because he's a child. <laughs> I mean, I've seen him try to slam a phone before. That's foolish. But it's because he's a child. However, some foolishness is not cured just by time. It's cured by rod. Are you listening to me? Yes, if you don't apply the rod, the foolishness that is in it will not go just because of time. The rod. So what matures a child is not just time, but the application of a rod. But every time, inexperience. There are many things I've said as a young preacher that were foolish. If I have a church like this, I will never collect tithes and offering. Foolish. That's, that's a stupid statement. The people who are collecting it are not, you, you, think they are, you think they don't have integrity? They don't say many things just out of um, useful example. They just open their mouth and talk. Wow. Foolish things because they are young. When they stay 10 years in the matter, they'll say, ah, you still know, be like, like that. Though. There's wisdom in those things that those are our fathers will do. There's wisdom there. So, you see what I'm saying is that when people are inexperienced or when people are immature, they manifest some measures of foolishness. Number three, another scenario that describes foolishness in scripture are uh, actions taken in ignorance. When somebody is ignorant, there will be inevitable expressions of foolishness. Proverbs chapter, rather Psalms chapter 73 and verse 22. Let's see that one here. Psalm 73 and 22.
I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. The word beast here is animal. You see, one of the things that separates humans from animals is the degree of knowledge, the kind of knowledge we possess. So, the psalmist here says that when he was foolish because of his ignorance, ignorance will make people say foolish things. And of course, you don't know everything. You can't know everything. <laughs> so, sometimes, that's why when you are not sure, it's better to keep quiet. One of the ways you identify a fool. Now, somebody is not necessarily a fool because he's ignorant. But when somebody is ignorant and keeps talking, he's a fool. Are you listening to me? The Bible says even a fool is considered to be a wise man if he keeps quiet. Just say, hmm, that's deep. Mm. Don't say, I beg you to disagree. When, when in the Bible says, so, stop, stop, talk. What if you don't know something? You, stop, don't talk like that. Keep quiet. It's better you just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. I said, mm mm. Nice one. Nice one. I said, nice one. <laughs> what you want to now contribute? Then when you now say what you want to say, hey, they begin to check your profile. Who's your father? Who school do you go? Because you are in disgrace to your, your entire lineage. Then why did you talk? <laughs> but expressions born out of ignorance. In 1 Corinthians 15 36, Paul rebuked the Corinthian church sharply. It was an argument about resurrection, and they didn't understand. They were saying things like, How can a, a, what body will a resurrected body have? And he says, Oh, fool. That's the way he started the, the conversation in verse 10. He says, Foolish one, what you saw is not mean alive until it dies. Paul was like, You guys don't get it because you are ignorant. Of course, the commission church were ignorant in several things. They were ignorant about spiritual gifts. So he told them, Concerning spiritual gifts, I will not have you ignorant. They were ignorant concerning the Holy Communion. He educated them about that. They were ignorant about food offered to idols. They were ignorant about sexual relations. These guys were ignorant and so they said and thought and did many foolish things. You must contend for knowledge though because your ignorance will package you as a fool if you are not careful. Are you listening to me? And one last point in this direction. Every lack of or deficiency in wisdom also suggests that there is a measure of foolishness there. Once you are deficient in wisdom concerning any subject, it means, in all honesty, that you are simple concerning that matter. For instance, there are many ladies who are simple concerning football. My wife, for instance, is simple concerning football. She asks me what is offside. I, I have tried to explain somebody to her, including using my PS4 to say, see, this line, if you this line, but sometimes she still does not understand it. <laughs> Offside. But every brother is not, every brother is complex towards football. Some brothers are not anyway. Some brothers don't know jack about football. They are simple too concerning football. The point is that if there's a deficiency or lack of wisdom in a particular subject, you cannot, you cannot afford to be simple in scriptures. Are you listening to me? As a child of God, there are some subjects that are compulsory courses in life. You can't afford to be simple in scriptures, simple in prayers. No. Uh, in first, this should be first Kings now, chapter 3 and verse 7 to 9, God appeared to Solomon and asked him what he wants. Solomon, I like the way Solomon said it. Look at, let's read. Now, oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. I am a little child. Solomon acknowledged that. I know they do, I know from boss for you. I know Sabi. I have a deficiency in wisdom concerning leadership. But I'm a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people. Too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore give to your servants an understanding act to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge these great people of yours. Solomon acknowledged that I am not complete in wisdom. There is a deficiency of wisdom. So when he was asked, what do you want? He said, Biko, give me wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. There are many people who lack wisdom, but they are not asking. Too arrogant to ask. And beyond asking, too arrogant to learn. 
Solomon said, I'm a little child. I don't know anything. Your people is a great nation. I don't have the experience, the skill to lead them. Please give me wisdom. He, you see, that was where his wisdom started from. Solomon's wisdom was demonstrated in his desire for wisdom. You, like I said, somebody who is who contains a measure of foolishness, it's not a big deal. But when people now do not admit their need for wisdom, that's where foolishness now begins. We all need wisdom. Tell your neighbor you need wisdom. Everybody needs wisdom. And that's why we are dealing with this matter tonight and throughout this month. So I'm saying here that the major problem concerning wisdom or concerning foolishness or simplicity is when there is no value on it, when there is no desire for it. And that's what we read in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20 to 22. Let's look at those verses again. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. Wisdom was advertising itself. Wisdom was saying, I'm available. It says, Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourse. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? Give this in another version so that you will not assume that I am the one wrongly interpreting the phrase simple or simplicity. Please put it in like the NLT or maybe the NIV. Let's see what simple ones and simplicity really means. PRU, you are too slow. You will drag me this night and we have very short time. How long, you simple tons? Uh -uh. Simple still there, there. Give me another version. Ah! Uh -huh. Give me another version. And I have to say simple ones. Ah! Uh -uh. Message says say simpler terms. Okay. Uh, this one is a little bit better. You say idiot. Is there or I'm not the one who. Really, look at it. It says simpler terms. How long will you wallow in ignorance? Cynics. How long will you feed on your cynicism? Cynicism. Idiot. You see, you see what you're talking about there. How long will you refuse to learn? Huh. How long, all simple ones, open to evil, will you love being simple and discover delight in scoffing and self-confident self fools? Eight knowledge. So you see that the conversation there is about foolishness and all of that. What I'm saying here, however, is that if somebody has wisdom available to him, yet does not open himself to learning. That's when the person can be tagged a fool. If somebody rejects the cry of wisdom, if somebody rejects the plea of wisdom, that's when he can be tagged a fool. He's not a fool just because he's inexperienced. He's not a fool just because he's immature. He's not a fool just because he's ignorant about certain things. But if he now has wisdom available to him and rejects it, that's when you can really say, this person is a fool by excellence. Proverbs 23, 9. Proverbs 23, 9. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool. Why? For I will despise the words, or the wisdom of your words. If you speak to the hearing of a fool, he will despise your words. So the Bible recommends that don't say anything. Don't say anything. He will despise it. He will not value it. He will reject it. In fact, he will quarrel with you. Wisdom only comes to those who value it and demand it. Yeah. You see, you can get to a point where it will not just be about you looking for wisdom. It will be wisdom looking for you. Because you're a good customer. Are you listening to me? Oh, yeah. I know what it is where... Like the, uh, it's like the spirit of wisdom is forcing some information on me. Even if I'm not interested in hearing it. Even if I'm distracted with some other things. Like the spirit of wisdom is saying, take it, you must take it, you must take it, you must take it. So I now say, okay, what are you giving me? Say, ah, this is a very useful information. What if you don't value wisdom? Wisdom will not come to you. Your, your life must be, your life must have a magnetic attraction to wisdom. Yeah. Wise people must be comfortable around you. You see, if the only people comfortable around you are simple people, it means that probably you have a track record of not valuing wisdom. 
And so, anytime a wise man comes around you, you chase them away. You pick offense. It may be that your life is actually repulsive to wisdom. Look at it in Proverbs 17, 16. Put it in the King James and then we'll read the NLT. Proverbs 17 and 16. Why is there in the hand of a fool the purchase price of wisdom since he has no heart for it? Now let's read it in the NLT to understand what it is. And I like the way the NLT describes it. It is senseless to pay tuition to educate a fool. It shock you. My Bible. <laughs> since he has no heart for learning, you can carry $10 million and send him to Harvard. You just wasted your money. He has no heart. He says it's senseless to pay tuition to educate the fool. <laughs> Are you listening to me? So before you before you invest in anybody's education, confirm if the person likes learning first. It's not everybody likes learning. Some people are comfortable with their simplicity. The simpler terms of life. They are comfortable. That's how they want to be. So if you force them to attend seminar to attend conference, you invite the greatest speakers in the world to educate them, you are wasting your time. They have no heart for it. They have no value for it. Don't be like this. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 2. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 2. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Put it in the NLT. A fool does not want to learn, he just wants to talk. As you are talking, he's already having a comment to say. He's already saying, why are you not balancing this post? This preaching is not balanced. They, they, they are too busy to, they are too busy talking, they will not even read and learn well. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to add their own opinions. You have not even read the post to the end. You want to balance it. <laughs> it's a sign of foolishness. Let me give you three clues and symptoms or signs that somebody has no value for wisdom. Those of you now, they see, they, you see, they find a husband or wife. Let me give you a clue that somebody has no value for wisdom. What's the name of this uh, woman that married Nabal? Abigail. How would you Abigail see for Nabal, buddy? Even when the man's name is a turn off already. How will you marry a man named fool? <laughs> now, Juju be that. Maybe he doesn't want. Do I don't understand? Hello, my name is Fool. Would it be my babe? I will take those time. <laughs> but there are many Christians who they see the person's foolishness and they still put their head there. Still put their head there. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> All right. Three signs that somebody has no value for wisdom. Number one, he hates and avoids correction. He hates it. When you correct him, he gets depressed. Once you see them saying they are depressed, it's because somebody corrected them. They are no longer going to come to church. They are looking for a change of church, a change of spiritual father. They hate correction. They hate to be corrected and they avoid those that correct them. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 8. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 8. Do not correct the scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. How you know somebody is wise and has value for wisdom? When you correct him, he comes closer. When you know, how you know somebody is foolish and has no value for wisdom? When you correct them, they run away. They go and hide. Do you understand it? I know many people have left me because I attempted to correct them. The best way to lose a scoffer is to correct them. If you want to chase foolish people out of your life, correct them. They will leave you alone forever. It's not difficult. I don't know how to break the relationship. <laughs> the code is here. Correct. <laughs> Once you, they, will, they will run away. Oh, are you listening to me? Yes, foolish people don't stay around me because I know the secret to chase them. You correct them. You correct. Once you correct, they are gone. They will run and they will never turn back. 
you correct a scoffer, he will hate you. If you correct a wise person, ah, he will give you a dangerous seed. I said that correction saved my life. Hi! Thank you so much. Proverbs 12 and verse 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction, say simple. Is what? Say simple. Is what? He says, is what? Simple. simple. Let's not let's not be too aggressive. <laughs> he who hates correction is simple. That's why I've told you so. When you want to deal with this kind of people who don't read their Bible, let's use simple. They won't understand. And on Facebook, I can just tell somebody, don't be simple. Don't be simple. <laughs> you say, no, simplicity is a mark of greatness. I'll say, see, you don't understand. If you don't get it, forget about it. What? If you don't. <laughs> Number two, how do you know somebody who has no value for wisdom? He enjoys the company of foolishness. He enjoys staying around fools. Where foolish discussion is happening, that's, that's his favorite habitat. When wise people are talking, it's not comfortable. They are too boring. Wisdom conversations are too boring for fools. They want to talk trash. They want to talk things that have no value. They want to have foolish conversations. And they can do it for hours. They can do nine digits on it. When you see somebody so comfortable who enjoys the company of foolishness and the company of fools, it means he has no value for wisdom. Proverbs 13 20. Proverbs 13 20. He who walks with the wise man will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. So there's something called, or there's someone called a companion of fools. You be, should begin to stop thinking about Sister being paid. And but that day, look at your life. I say, are there fools around me? If the answer is yes, ask, do I enjoy their company? If I enjoy their company, well, are they? Oh. Because what the Bible tells us is that there will be destruction, and I will show you the destruction that foolishness causes. He says the companion of fools will be destroyed. And I'm not the one who foolish, you. it's just my companions that are foolish. The destruction will extend to you. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. He remains small, oh, David, for cut Abigail head. Because the man was so angry when he sent the message to Nabal. And I was like, all these, all these wanderers on the, the wilderness. They would say, when I entered the house, everybody there would be beheaded. But thankfully, Abigail quickly went and said, hey, my lord, my lord, my lord, we sabi you now, we sabi you. You are a God's general. Don't be angry. Pacified him. Eventually, even married him. Hmm. Abigail. Abigail. But what do you go find for Nabal house in the first place? <laughs> the companion of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs 14 and verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man. Leave the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of man. You have been noticing the way the man has been talking. You see, say, he's, well, he's a good man. But he's a nice guy. <laughs> That's how destruction happens. I don't know what the daughters of Lot were thinking. How you went to now go and have boyfriends in a land of homosexuals. People who could attempt to rape an angel. Their foolishness was grade A. Cha cha. How do you say an angel that comes to mind is less raping? <laughs> so when Lot said, Oh, you're going to call your boyfriend so that we can leave. They're about to destroy the place. They laugh. They say, hey, destroy. Nobody we don't do this. When you have a backup, we don't do this town. Nobody destroy him because it will make you go get that kind of boyfriend. The first place. Some people might say, I'm shocked at what my husband did. <laughs> you shocked. You perceived in him the voice of foolishness. But Pisa and Shawama did not allow you to see. You say we change. <laughs> he said, "Go away. Go from the present. Leave. Avoid. Abstain. Run away from the presence of a foolish man." You may say, "Don't worry. I will change him." Uh, the Bible says, "Run away first. Save your soul." <laughs> Once you perceive that there is a voice of foolishness, the way he talks is foolish. 
be interceding for me from afar. This stands in session. <laughs> Number three, sign that somebody has no value for wisdom. Most of what he spends his resources on, or most of what she spends her resources on, do not contribute to his progress in wisdom. How they spend their time, how they spend their money, how they spend their energy does not contribute in any way to progress in wisdom. If somebody spends so much money on what the Bible refers to as vanity, let me say this some little vanity is allowed. Are you listening to me? Some little vanity is allowed. I want to watch a match. It's a little vanity. 22 half naked men chasing the round leather is vanity. It does not have the economy of a nation. It does not add one cover to me. It's vanity. But it's allowed. It's okay. A little vanity is allowed. But when somebody spends most of his time, most of his treasures, most of his resources, most of his energy in vanity, on vanity, that's somebody who has no value for wisdom. These are signs, very clear signs, that a man or a woman has no value for wisdom. Let me progress here. Wisdom is necessary because foolishness is too costly. Ah, foolishness is too costly. I like how he says it in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1. The Bible does not speak of wisdom as something to manage, something to endure, something to cope with, but something to hate. Look at what it says here. Dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor. So does a little folly. Everybody say little folly. So one respected for wisdom and honor is a mighty man of God, but he has a little foolishness in managing finances. It brings disgrace and shame. Are you listening to me? Don't tolerate any measure of foolishness. Stop saying my own is not that bad. Uh -uh. Somebody can be so wonderful in several things. Excellent career path, excellent academics, but in the wisdom of marital choice, he does not have sufficient knowledge. He can ruin and wreck everything he has been building for the past 25 years. One little foolishness. Are you listening to me? One little foolishness. A great man of God, a God general, but in the wisdom of managing the opposite sex, he is very wretched. And every anointing is wasted just because there's a deficiency in one part of his life. Anywhere you see foolishness, <laughs> be aggressive about overcoming it. It can wreck everything. He's a good man, no, but now that's more thing. I just catch up. Now that's more thing. I've seen destinies ruined over small foolishness. Ah, kekere, simplicity, tokere. Very small simplicity. But uh, just as dead flies putrefy the perfumer's ointment. And the flies do not have to be much. Are you listening to me? Yes, a little, a little evil, as it were, can do much harm to much good. Let me tie this up by mentioning the dangers of foolishness and the advantage of wisdom. That's what I will say. The next 30 minutes there about, and we should be good for today. I said that. Uh, you must contend for wisdom because foolishness is too costly. And I want to tell you why foolishness is too costly. Explain it with scriptures and tell you the advantage of wisdom. Number one, the dangers of foolishness. Foolishness is a destroyer, simply put. While wisdom builds, foolishness destroys. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. So, the concept of building requires wisdom. The architect's wisdom is required in constructing a house. The engineer's wisdom is required in constructing a bridge. 
The preacher's wisdom is required in constructing a sermon note. The musician's wisdom is required in constructing a beat, a melody. To build, you will need wisdom. But it also tells us in the reverse that foolishness is a destroyer. If you don't deal with foolishness, it will destroy you. Proverbs 14 and verse 1. Let's see that scripture there. The wise woman built a house, but the simple, everybody says simple. simple. You know the meaning of it? Yes, Pulls it down with her hands. You see people building their own house with wisdom. You see simple people building, tearing it down, tearing it Anybody you see who majors in destruction, it is because of simplicity. Are you listening to me? Pardon me, you Perez fans. But Perez is an expert destroyer. In a sense. When he sees something, he wants to break it like his name, Perez. Breakthrough. He wants to break and smash. And smash. That's where he gets joy and fulfillment. Uh, <laughs> is he mature? He is foolish? Foolishness destroys. If you don't destroy your foolishness, it will destroy you. Lives destroyed by virtue of foolishness. Careers, jobs, marriages, ministry, churches, nations. Destroyed society. Destroyed because of simplicity. What I was quoting earlier concerning Nabal. First Samuel chapter 25. Sad. That man lost his life because he was foolish. Maybe it's downwards, but I'm not going to read the entire story. You probably know the story already. He lost his life not because there was a satanic attack. Some of the reasons we call satanic attack and our simplicity. Simplicity is in Aikosan. When you see structures that took years to build suddenly go down, first of all, check simplicity. It may be a simplicity that destroyed it. You see nations suddenly collapse. You see empires suddenly crush. It could be because simplicity was not dealt with. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 6. Let me thoroughly explain this issue. Folly is set, this man was lamented, was lamenting the preacher. Folly is set in great dignity while the rich sit in a lowly place. The word rich there refers to people that are supposed to have some measure of royal wisdom. They sit in a lowly place. This is, the, this is the picture of Nigeria. How a nation, a nation like Nigeria can be governed by daft people is always a wonder to me. Have you seen what Nigerians are doing in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Canada? And we can gladly elect a governor that can use phone. Some senators cannot use phone, smartphone. They cannot. the biggest black nation in the entire world fully set in great dignity it's a it's a terrible terrible state one of the reasons why nations collapse let me teach you this is because people do not know that it takes a great deal of wisdom in practical sense to lead people think that all that is required to lead is a desire an interest or old age there are many foolish sorry many simple old men they are very old though but very simple and by simple very simple there's great idea but very simple <laughs> he's very old though let's make him the leader <laughs> uh -uh. Foolishness setting great dignity. You see, I like the way the Western world. Ah, there must be track record of wisdom. You must have solved certain problems. Ah no. Before they, of course, I'm not saying they, they are perfect in their own electoral processes and democratic values. But then, there's a way that cannot win election. Somebody does not have certificate. It's called. <laughs> you don't have. You don't have certificate. 
And you want to you want to be leader of millions of people because you have great air. That's why they make ridiculous laws. Because they are, you see, their mentality is so backward. <laughs> you have people campaigning on uh, things like let's go back to farm. Do you know what year we are? Japan, they are thinking about crazy technological innovations. In China, do you know the kind of things they are thinking about? <laughs> Robotic engineering. I was watching Yemen's presidential walk in into the I think, United Nations Assembly meeting. His bodyguard is a robot. He's a robot. <laughs> what people have left. You are here talking about. Uh, let me not mention anything. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Fools as dignitaries. Fools. <laughs> Simple people occupying positions. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Is a pro that's how nations are destroyed. That's how societies are destroyed. Foolishness is destructive. Wisdom is constructive. Wisdom is constructive. Foolishness is destructive. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 3. Let's read this in the King James and a few other versions. I like the CEV. If you have the CEV, well, let's read the King James first. The foolishness of a man twists his way and his heart frets against the Lord. You will not appreciate it in this version. Give me CEV or NLT. <laughs> we are ruined by our own stupidity. No, we blame the Lord. <laughs> You see, that many people say, manager hey, succeed. <laughs> oh God, also, I just laugh. Stop, it's not God. Let's, let's stop this thing. It's not God, it's God. I want stupidity. This, some of the people say, manager succeed. If you ask them who they are voting for, you will now see that it's not in God's hand. It's not in God. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a God issue. We are our own stupidity ruins us, and I will blame God. Where was God when this happened? Where was God? Why are you blaming God for something your stupidity cost? Are you listening to me? Put it in the NLT. It says it's a similar thing. People ruin their own lives by their own foolishness, and then they are angry at the Lord. The man was manifesting great measures of foolishness. You see, by faith, by faith, by faith, we change. You married him. What is that punching you in the night? You know, say, oh God. Which God? See, where, where my, my angels were looking as the man was punching me. Oh, what, what, what were your angels supposed to do? <laughs> when the chop shower, you shout out with angel. You give, you give angel chop. foolishness and then they get angry with God, God. <laughs> let's stop simplicity please number two dangers of foolishness the advantage of wisdom foolishness will chip in your life it will chip in your life your life will lose value when you are foolish when you are simple wisdom will make you valuable you want to add value to your life Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. If you want to chip in your life, stay with simplicity. You want to be ordinary, a nobody, no promotion, no progress. Org simplicity. You want to add value to your life? Ah, you seek wisdom. You pursue wisdom. You buy wisdom. You chase wisdom. First Kings chapter 10 and verse 21. Solomon's wisdom ensured that there was no silver in his palace. Everything was gold. Value. Value. There was no silver. Silver was like dust. It was too common. Why? Because he went for wisdom. When you go for wisdom, your life is expensive. You're not trash. You're not commonplace. But if you stay with simplicity, it will chip in your life. Chip in your life. Proverbs 16 and 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold? 
and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. If there's something you are looking for right now, you should be used up. In all your team, get. All right. So, foolishness will chip in your life. Wisdom will make you valuable. A fool is no use. Or a fool is of no use. And if a fool is of no use, he cannot be paid. He's not adding value, so he cannot receive value. Do you understand that? Uselessness is traced to foolishness. When somebody is useless, because he's foolish, it's simple. Too simple to be useful. Joseph and Daniel were relevant amongst kings because of their wisdom. They were wise. Wise men. Egypt had a problem. Pharaoh had a problem. Joseph preferred the solution. Daniel, when he was working in the palace, the king had dreams. The man gave wisdom. Wisdom of interpretation. Wisdom of revelation. It is wisdom that makes you relevant. It's wisdom that can promote you. It's wisdom that can make you useful to kings. You see, if you want to be useful to kings, you must be wise. Proverbs 14, 25. I'm not sure if that's the scripture, but check it out. Proverbs 14, 25. No, okay, check 35. Alright, the king's favor is towards a wise servant. But his wrath is against him who causes shame. Simplicity will cause shame. It will cause, shame. It will cause disgrace. So, go for wisdom if you want to make your life valuable. If, for instance, you are noticing that valuable people are avoiding you, People of timber and caliber are avoiding you. It may be because simplicity is in your body. The king's favor is towards a wise servant. The king's favor. One of the ways to get wisdom or to get favor right now is to be wise. Be wise. Say wise things. Do wise things. Take wise decisions. That's how to attract the king's favor. Number three, dangers of foolishness. Foolishness will worsen every situation. Wisdom will improve every situation. Foolishness worsens situations, worsens people, but wisdom will improve and make better even bad situations. You see, eh? The problem is not that challenges happen in life. The problem is that many times the reaction is a foolish one. Yeah. A situation can be bad, but you don't have to make it worse by foolishness. It is bad enough that your husband is angry. There is a wise response to ensure that it does not become something too bad. Wisdom helps to manage a bad situation and convert it to a good situation. Improves the situation. Wisdom. There are many situations that Jesus faced that was bad. But by wisdom, he was able to seek hope. Some people came with terrible questions to implicate him. By wisdom, he was able to give an answer that still justified himself. It's not too bad that you lost money. But how are you reacting? I will never give offering again. <laughs> That's a simple reaction. You lost money. When you were doing the investments, you didn't tell pastor. They scammed you. <laughs> People can make mistakes. Bad situations can happen. But don't complicate it by taking simple reactions. No, don't, call, don't make this worse. This is low, so raise it up a little bit. Proverbs 16 verse 20. He who eats the words 
the he who eats the word wisely will find good. Mm -mm. This is the wrong scripture. Let's forget about it. I'm not sure the exact one, but then it must be when I was typing my notes, I must have missed this. Okay. I was talking about the fact that if you react in foolishness, things will become worse. If you react with wisdom, things will get better. There are some people that when you carry your problem to them, they will give you a simple counsel that will complicate the matter. The problem is measured as 20 degrees. When you act on the counsel, that simple counsel, everybody says simple counsel, <laughs> it will become 90 degrees. <laughs> a counsel of fools. <laughs> but as a matter of people, the problem is there where you go to them and they give you their own counsel. The problem does not disappear, but at least it reduces. It gives you some space, some breathing space to think about a way out. Foolishness always worsens situation, complicates matters. Number four. Foolishness will endanger and weaken. It will endanger your life. It will weaken your life. It will endanger your marriage. It will weaken your marriage. Wisdom protects wisdom strengthens but the major thing i want to emphasize on this point is that foolishness endangers by carelessness one of the ways to identify somebody with a great measure of simplicity is carelessness careless it does not matter now careless not sober never watchful very naive proverbs 14 16 A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. One of the eight wonders of the world is the confidence of a fool. He's a fool, but he's so confident. How can you be simple and arrogant? Bad combo. Raging, raging. There is, you see where you are going is. You're on a fast track to destruction, but you are going 200 km per hour. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> are you listening to me? Put this in another version. When it says a wise man fears, what does it mean? Another version, please. Proverbs 14:16. Only a stupid fool is never cautious. Let's make it softer. Only a simple man is never cautious. So be extra careful and stay out of trouble. Everybody say extra careful. If you're extra careful, it's a sign of wisdom. If you're taking your time to be sure, it's a sign of wisdom. Don't rush into decisions, especially destiny decisions. This is not just about eba or rice, eba or rice. Calm down. Think well. Think thrice. Think thrice. Are you listening to me? Yeah. When you see a simple person, no extra caution. No, we shall keep it. No matter what I do. <laughs> you will now know that there is grace, so there is mercy, but there are certain situations that you may not be fully ransomed from it. Oh, yeah. Marriage is something like that. If you marry wrong, what the pastor will be telling you is he that endures to the end shall be saved. <laughs> you think they'll take the divorce? You think your pastor will take the divorce? <laughs> well, no, before my mouth, you go, yeah, Rambo. Say, carry your cross, my sister. God is with you in the midst of the storm. You will be receiving grace for endurance. Why receive grace for endurance? When your mates are receiving grace for enjoyment, yeah. you will receive grace for endurance. Endure all things. As a good soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Oh, sometimes you need to take your time. Take your time. It is what they wait. Take your time. Wait. Double, double check. Get multitude of counsels. Ask several people their opinion. You're asking your friend what, it's, what they think about your boyfriend. What would your friend tell you? Mama, oh, if you won't give me, I will collect him. I will tell you that now. Nobody go and paint a picture say, you are a simple person. Nobody go give you that kind of impression. Say, on your wedding day like this, you think I would dance, eh? 
So people are just dancing on the wedding. They say, hey, you know masquerade dance? When the masquerade is dancing, <laughs> it's not for joy, you. <laughs> are you listening to me? Yes, Only a simple person is never cautious. And he just, just, no matter what happens, God is with me. God will deliver me. You will now know that there are some deliverance that even though you'll be delivered, it will look like you are seeing it. The scars and the pain. <laughs> be extra cautious. Wisdom receives multitudes of counsel that produces strength. Foolishness is hasty in decision that makes you vulnerable and endangers you. People are hasty in decisions. Something you should wait and wait and wait to decide. You just according to how you feel, just just move. Hmm. Yeah. Proverbs chapter twenty-two and verse three. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple look at it, NKJV. But the simple pass on. Give me another dangerous version. When you see trouble coming, don't be simple. When you see trouble coming, don't be simple. And walk right into it. Be smart and hide. No matter what I do, God will still keep me. God will still keep me. You can't choke your head inside. <laughs> oh. Jesus was not simple. Many times, people want to come and kill him. He will disappear from their midst. I'm all about it. We move, we don't go. <laughs> they find me for the I don't come out. That was Jesus. You, you can say, hey, God will keep me. God will keep me waiting. <laughs> oh, dear. No, don't be simple. Give me another passion, daddy. And healthy. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precaution. The simpleton goes blindly and suffers the consequences. <laughs> Simplicity will expose you to hazards of life. Unnecessary hazards. There are enough hazards even for wise people. Why do you not go and add your own extra again? Because of simplicity. <laughs> With all the wisdom of Jesus, they still killed him. And I imagine it was simple. From childhood self, they were going to kill him. The angel told his father, Move! Get out of here! Joseph did not say, Say, be an angel, you can protect him. I said, Move! <laughs> Till the man died. Till the other died. Jesus was permitted to come back. That's something to just avoid. Don't, don't, don't stress yourself. Just avoid. There are some battles that are not worth it. Some prayer points are a waste of time. Just avoid it. Are you getting it now? Proverbs 14, 15. I think we read the aftermath verse. Let's see the 15. The simple believes every word. But the prudent considers well his steps. Give me a dangerous version. Don't be simple. And believe all you hear. No, be everybody. We wear coats. Now be pastor. Some people na babalawo. Tush babalawo. Executive babalawo. No, but everybody was having use preacher's voice. <laughs> no, but everybody like that be man of God. Some na man of God. Don't be stupid and believe all you hear. Be smart and know where you are headed. I can die for you. You are the only one I love. Don't be stupid and believe all you hear. Be smart and know where you are headed. This is the way. This is the way. We pass there. Our fathers pass there. Our grandfathers pass there. Don't be stupid and believe all you hear. Are you listening to me? Yes, One last point. Yeah. Wisdom illuminates. Foolishness darkens. Foolishness is a darkener. The danger of foolishness is that it darkens your path. <laughs> you become blind. Wisdom brings clarity to life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10, it says wisdom is profitable to direct. If wisdom is profitable to direct, foolishness is unprofitable because it darkens the path, it misdirects, it confuses. 
wisdom directs foolishness confuses ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 14 that's the last scripture we read so much the wise man's eyes are in his head ask your neighbor are your eyes in your head some people the way they behave you think their eyes is on their bum bum why are you doing like this can't you see like is it not obvious this is a trap can't you see it's not obvious this is fake news this is photoshop can't you see this is what some people share on the media you're wondering say you went to school say you went to school can't you see a wise man's eyes are in his head somebody say where is his eyes supposed to be before because some people's eyes are on their inners. The way they behave, you were asking them, Where's your eyes? Where's your eyes? But the fool walks in darkness. The fool walks in darkness. Listen to me. Where there is foolishness, nothing is clear. Something that should be so obvious. Great confusion. Stand to your feet and pray for wisdom. I believe you have hated simplicity tonight. You have hated it. You have seen the dangers of it. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Let him ask. Let him ask. Let him ask. Pray for wisdom. Spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God. Come upon me. Flow out of me. Flow out of me. Flow out of me. Flow out of me. Enough of simplicity, aka foolishness. Enough. It darkens, it chippens, it destroys, it complicates, it worsens. Go for wisdom, go for wisdom, go for wisdom. Wisdom cries out on the streets. Hear my voice. Come on, come on, come on, go for wisdom. Go for wisdom, go for wisdom. Katakana manos te krekete balabadaba. Lekene porobadabada ste krekete ba. Mekinde stokofatinde. Rabababadabada ste kete. Let your test be for wisdom. Let your test be for wisdom. Let your desire be for wisdom. Makatakada yabadabada balabadabadaba. Rebede ste katakada banamanasha. I receive wisdom tonight for my tomorrow, for my future, for my today. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Makata kata ya bada bada bala badash. Reke ke 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 baramba leke te kada ba ya bala bada 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 bana manasta. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word of wisdom that has come to our hearts today. We receive correction. We receive rebuke. We adjust accordingly. Thank you for taking our time to correct us. We have received this correction as an expression of your love. And we are so grateful. We are so grateful. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.